Um, welcome to Tech Talks number 16. This is our final webinar, and our topic tonight will be fostering digital citizenship. And this webinar is brought to you by the Ed Rising program at Rio Salado College. So thanks, Rio, for this journey the last several months of um, presenting webinars to uh, teachers who've heard about the program or who are in Arizona. Um, the public has been invited to participate and we've had a few enthusiastic supporters along the way. All of the webinars will are recorded and will live on in, um, you know, forever. Um, if you want to know more about our Tech Talk series and see the whole program, you can go to bit.ly slash Tech Talks with Lucy and see our flyer that originated this series. And we'll give you a little bit more details about the program. All of our resources are in uh, something called Google Classroom. And if you go to okay. uh, classroom.google.com, that's going to be uh, the main place. And you have to log in with your personal Gmail address. If you use a district Gmail address, you may not be able to join because your administrator has not allowed that kind of collaboration. And so we recommend that you use your personal Gmail address to do this. So you go to classroom.google.com and in the corner, I'll show you in a minute, um, there's a plus sign and you're gonna click on that and select join class and you have to put in a code after that. And the code is YXFLGJ7. And I'll say it again in case if you're like you're on the phone and you, um, uh, YXFLGJ7. And Could I be writing this down now? Yeah, I think it would probably, because if you have this, then you have everything. So classroom.google.com mm -hmm. is the website. And okay. then and then the code that you have to put in when you click on the plus sign is what lowercase y, all of this is lowercase by the way, y, x, f, l, g, j, seven. Y, x, f, l, g, j, seven. And that will get you into um, our Google Classroom setup and you'll see the, the 16 categories which are the topics that we, we, we covered this year or this season. And if you click on the categories, you'll see typically a recording um, and a list of resources that I curated on that topic. Um, I haven't uploaded all the videos. I still have a few more to do, but most of them are there. And I will have them done within, I'll have everything up within the next week or so. There's one episode that I have to re-record on YouTube um, because we had a glitch that time, but um, you'll find everything there. Let me show you what it looks like. You're on the phone, but can, you, can, you can see my screen, right? Uh, yeah, I can see uh, the flowers. Yeah, that's my, that's my background. Um, screen. Okay, so here's Classroom. Okay. It's coming up. Here's classroom.google.com. And you'll see that I joined a bunch of different Google Classrooms. There are all those squares that are on the page. Um, the one that is for us is, it looks like you joined because we, we have 27 students in there. Maybe you've already joined, I don't know. Um, but you click on, on uh, what well, I can click on here and get in here because I already joined it. But you would click on, um, there's a plus sign in the corner up here. And you click on there, click on join class, and you're given a prompt for the class code. And when you join... Do each... Can I ask a question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, do each of these, do each of these classes um, have a separate class code? Yeah, and these are ones that I've created for other professional development events. You won't have all these. You'll, you will only get into the one that's called Tech Talks for Lucy. Okay. And you can use this. I mean, if you have a Google account, you can make Google Classrooms for 
you know, if you're teaching a class to students or to adults, um, it's just a, it's a nice kind of placeholder for content. And um, and so it looks a little bit kind of like Facebook. It has that kind of stream down the middle. And then the topics are on the left hand side. And you can sort through what we've talked about um, and look at the different resources. So, for instance, in this particular one, here are the slides that I used. We we're talking about stu assessing student work. And then I provided some resources on, on formative assessment and that sort of thing. So, um, so each of these categories represents a different webinar that we've done. And tonight's webinar resources are, the, are in the last category. And you'll see that the slides that I'm going to show you in a minute are here. And you, the, this, these slides and resources will be up here forever. I'm not going to be deleting it or cutting off access to it. So you can always go back and look at these things. Or if you're teaching a workshop, you're more than, more than, um, you're welcome to, to uh, use these things. So um, tonight's theme is digital citizenship. And we're, we've been talking, um, you know, generally our topics have gone from the more practical things, like the first couple of webinars were about using Google Docs and slides and using the Chrome web browser. There were more kind of practical, specific things. And then um, our more, more recent ones have been on more advanced topics like classroom management and project-based learning and, and things like that. So that's a, a little bit of an overview of, um, of where we've been with this. Now I'm going to um, go back to my slides here. And if you have any more questions, just let me know. I'm going to mute you. Um, just do, so do I um, can I talk freely or should I not talk because I'm sitting outside the house and then the dogs are barking yeah too. I hear the dogs I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you just so that um, and I'll stop at certain points and if you have questions I'll unmute you how does that sound uh, how do I how do you know if I have a question I'm gonna stop at certain points and I'll ask you if you have a question and then you can say whether you do or not oh I'm sorry is that okay so right now none of my none of my uh, the discussion we've just had re just now is not recorded? Everything is recorded. I'm sure. just going to mute the sound so I don't have your dogs in the background. Okay. Okay. You'll be able to hear everything. My talking will be recorded. Everything's recorded right now. Um, but I just won't have the dogs in the background. If you can see the, the chat in Zoom, there's a chat room with text. Um, it might be in your toolbar at the top if you're looking at your computer um, under maybe more. There's something called chat and you can write questions in there too if you're on your computer. Uh, but I'll, I'll pause periodically and if you have a question then you can then you can ask them. Okay, but okay. I, I just want to make sure yeah. that we don't have the, the, the dogs um, barking in the background. So, uh, <laughs> so um, and usually people can um, I'm looking for, let's see. Because uh, I'm connected using my phone, but not a computer. So how are you seeing the slides? You're just seeing it on your, on your, on your phone? Um, I, yeah, I downloaded the Zoom app. Oh, awesome. Okay. Earlier today. Yeah, earlier today. So I was like thinking, okay, I might need this. <laughs> yeah, it's really handy. It, it's nice to be able to do it on the go like that. Um, I'm looking for where I mute you and I can't find it. <laughs> so maybe I won't mute you. Um, I guess I won't mute you so that I can keep going. But um, uh, if I find that, I will mute you. <laughs> How about that? Okay. All right. So, um, so that's our code, uh, YXFLG7, to get into Google Classroom. My name is Lucy Gray, and I'm a former classroom teacher and technology coach. Uh, for the last eight years, I've been working as an ed tech consultant in the Chicago area. I work with uh, schools and uh, companies and, you know, places like Rio Salado to help them be more innovative 
I've also worked as an adjunct professor at National Lewis University, and I just started a month ago a job as the director of educational technology at a private independent school um, in the Chicago area. If you want to uh, follow me on Twitter, my username is Ella Menace. It's not here on the slides. And once in a while, we've used the hashtag EdRising at Rio. And also on the slide, you'll find my email address um, if you have any further questions and want to follow up with me. But that's a little bit about me and, uh, and that sort of thing. If you want to uh, access the slides, they are in our Google Classroom, or you can directly go to bit.ly slash techtalk17slides, uh, and that's a shortcut to the Google Slides that I'm using for this presentation. Again, it's bit.ly slash techtalk17slides, all one word there at the end. So uh, that gives you a shortcut to our slides. Um, our objectives today are to talk about the ISTE standards for the session, give an overview of digital citizen re citizenship resources, um, answer questions, and talk about other opportunities that you may be interested in to learn online after this webinar ends. So ISTE stands for the International Society for Technology and Education. It is the professional organization that I belong to and many ed tech people belong to as well as what regular teachers and administrators do as well. They're librarians in ISTE. Um, and they have standards around educational technology to help schools um, develop uh, programs for, student, for teachers and kids. So there are a set for students, there are a set for educators, there's one for administrators, um, they're currently refreshing them and they've refreshed the student ones and the educator ones uh, and the administrator ones. And I think next up will probably be uh, computer science teachers or technology coaches or some group like that. But there's probably six different sets of standards for various um, players in schools. Um, our standards for teachers tonight are the, uh, we're really focusing on the learner, leader, and designer st standards in this webinar. Um, educators continually improve their practice by learning from and with each other and, and exploring proven and promising practices that leverage technology to improve student learning. Educators seek out opportunities for leadership to support student empowerment and success and to improve teaching and learning. And educators design authentic learning-driven activities and environments that recognize and accommodate learner uh, variability. Um, and because our theme tonight is digital citizenship, I think it's really important to pay attention to the ISTE standards for students. And the main standard is students recognize the rights, responsibilities, and opportunities of living, learning, working in an interconnected digital world, and they act and model in ways that are safe, legal, and ethical. So that is the standard, and there are four indicators for that standard that kind of drilled down into what it means to be a digital citizenship, a digital citizen. So students cultivate and manage their digital identity and reputation and are aware of the permanence of their actions in the digital world. Students engage in positive, safe, legal, and ethical behavior when using technology, including social interactions online or when using network devices. Students demonstrate an understanding of and respect the rights and obligations of using and sharing intellectual property. Students manage their personal data to maintain digital privacy and security and are aware of data collection technology used to track their navigation online. So these are the kinds of concepts, these broad concepts are what we were, were trying to um, instill in, in students. And the following information I'm going to give you will provide you with really concrete lessons and activities that you can do with students that will lead to meeting those standards. So welcome to Fostering Digital Citizenship. And we're gonna, we're gonna listen to this video really quickly about what is digital citizenship. This is a video that is in our resources. It's from Common Sense Media. And I'm gonna play it and hopefully you'll be able to see it um, on your phone. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. 
So Common Sense Media is one of the leading organizations around digital citizenship, and um, I, we're going to talk a little bit more about them as we go on. But really, it's about, think, you know, digital citizenship is about thinking critically. It's about um, behaving responsibly um, and, and being safe online. Uh, another organization that is uh, um, a leader in this space is CyberWise. And they cite uh, a definition of digital citizenship from Ann Collier, who uh, maintains the website Net Family News. And she says, critical thinking and ethical choices about the content and impact on oneself, others, and one's community of what one sees, says, and produces with media devices and technologies. And CyberWise goes on to say the powerful technologies that most kids carry around in their pockets connect them with the world in new ways that can be both positive and negative. And, you know, digital citizenship is a preemptive measure that helps them um, operate in a more positive manner. Uh, so this kind of, I think, is a good definition that we can use going forward. And it's important, um, you know, to, I think, in this day and age, given the emphasis on, on people questioning what they're seeing in the media and that sort of thing, um, and the way that people are behaving online in this current climate, um, I think it's really, really, really important to kind of foster these skills in kids to counteract some of the negativity that we're seeing out there right now. So I'd like to tell you a story about a school that uh, a friend of mine used to work at and an initiative that they did that I thought was really, really important. And I think this is a good context for, um, for understanding what digital says, how you can how you can grow good digital citizens. So my friend Karen Blumberg used to work at the School of Columbia University in New York City. Uh, she now works at a school called Brearley. And in this slide, there's a link to um, her blog and to two articles that she wrote in her blog about um, how she worked on digital citizenship with her students. And I don't think she ever says digital citizenship in, in these blog posts. I could be wrong. Um, but what, what she did with what, so the basis of their program at the school of Columbia, and it's still going, even though Karen's not at the school is that they built their own social network for students. It's internal. It's not open to the public. It might be open to parents. Um, but they have a, their own social network that they built using open source software called ELG. And in it, every year, students create their own profiles, kind of like Facebook, and they put content in there and an avatar representing themselves. So they have a lot of conversations about identity and how they want to represent themselves online to their peers and how they should behave. And they have all sorts of, of activity going on in this school social network, including, um, I think they have you know, book talks and discussions uh, they create um, phony profiles for the founding fathers and, and have intera you know, interactions as those founding fathers. Um, and all sorts of, of different activities um, are built upon this safe space for kids to explore what social networks and their online presence means. And um, what's interesting about it is that the kids these do this, I think, second grade through eighth grade, and the kids, it's the, the content in there is archived at the end of school, the school year, and the kids start all over again the next year. And the idea is that they can kind of reinvent themselves and have a fresh start at the, every, at every, at the start of every school year as they engage in their, their internal social network. So I think this is really interesting. I think this is like a living, breathing, space that teaches digital citizenship year round. It's not just a set of lessons that you teach to kids and hope that it will take. This is actually giving them um, concrete practice in an almost real world situation. And I just, you know, I learned about this 10 years ago uh, from my friends who work, who used to work at the school. And I'm still impressed with this. I still think it's a brilliant idea. And so I want to encourage people who are listening to this webinar to think about how can you teach us creativ cre creatively 
creatively to your students? How can you foster this year round in ways that are, are um, impactful to students? Uh, you may not be able to build your own social network, but you can use tools like Edmodo and create classes in there and, and talk about digital citizenship in that context um, if you want to try something out like that. So, um, so that's, my, that's the story that I find really compelling is, is something to, to emulate. And where you'd find resources for these, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of these, and then we'll, we'll go to the internet and look at them a little bit more in depth. Uh, the, the really the kind of the pioneering place to go for resources for parents and for educators is common sense education or common sense media. And common sense has reviews of, of educational technology and movies and, and that sort of and other kinds of media that kids are um, partaking in. They also uh, have a digital citizenship curriculum in scope and sequence for teachers. So you don't have to necessarily write your own lessons. Um, they have, I believe, an online game that's being revised right now. In fact, the whole curriculum is kind of being revised and is supposed to be, I think, released sometime this fall. So this is um, a really great organization that, ha that is advocating for the safe uses of technology in schools and, and at home and providing the resources to, to help people educate kids properly about it. So it's a pretty comprehensive website, uh, lots of information here. Uh, if you're at a school that uses iPads, I believe that they have iBooks available that you can download and use on, on, um, on Apple devices, um, you know, that are kind of workbook-like. So some of the stuff may be being refreshed because every few years things get all, get all, need an update. Um, but there's tons and tons of stuff, and this is a really active organization. Notice at the top of the screenshot that it says that there's a privacy initiative. Um, we should take a look at that when we come back to the website because that's also been a big topic within uh, digital citizenship is is how do we um, how do we uh, protect students' data and uh, activity online that sort of thing. So we'll come back to this in a minute, but this is really kind of like the the go to place for everything related to digital citizenship. Um, their curricular framework focuses on these nine, you know, topics, and I think these topics are important to think about when you're with anything that you're doing with digital citizenship, um, in terms of kind of cover, making sure you've covered everything if you're planning a curriculum. So privacy and security, digital footprint and reputation, self-image and identity, creative credit and copyright. Uh, relationships and communication, information literacy, cyberbullying and, and digital drama, and internet safety. So these are really kind of the core components of what you want to teach when it comes to digital citizenship. Uh, Google has also uh, come out with something in the last year called Be Internet Awesome, and they have digital safety resources for kids that you can use in school or at home. There are lesson plans, there's an online game, there's all sorts of cool stuff here to use. It's all free, as is Common Sense Media's materials as well. So make sure you check that out. I am going to play a little video about it that's very quick from Google for Education. Welcome to EDU in 90. On this episode, we'll be looking at a new resource on digital safety and citizenship. There's a whole lot of information online, and the internet can be a powerful tool for the classroom and for extending student learning beyond the school day. But to make the most of the internet, kids need to be prepared to make smart decisions online. That's why we collaborated with online safety experts to develop Be Internet Awesome, a free program to help students understand how to stay safe online. The program centers around Innerland, an engaging web-based game that helps students put key lessons of digital safety into practice. Throughout four different mini-games, students learn to deny hackers, sink fishers, one-up cyberbullies, and outsmart oversharers on their way to becoming safe, confident explorers of the online world. And there's also the accompanying curriculum, which was designed for use in the classroom and includes lesson plans, 
guides for class and group discussion, and worksheets for students, which help complement Innerland. G Suite administrators can seamlessly make Innerland available to students directly from their school Chromebook taskbar. And for Google Classroom users, you're able to assign Innerland to specific classes or sections, or you can make the resource available to all your students in a class announcement. For more information and resources, check out the links below. Happy exploring, and we'll see you next time. Check out last. So, um, so Be Internet Awesome is from Google, and it's fairly new, and my it, it, it definitely um, a resource for you, particularly the game. I played some of it. And it's pretty fun and intriguing and gets kids to think about um, what they would do in different scenarios. Another interesting group is the digital, the DigSit Institute, the Digital Citizenship Institute. Um, there's a woman, I think her name's Mary Alice Curran, who runs this. And she, uh, she and her son actually do a lot of work around digital citizenship and they have resources for teachers and um, they they hold a digital citizens, citizenship summit if people are interested in, in more professional development and um, when we come back to this website I'm going to show you something they're doing with a tool called Flipgrid hopefully um, the next one I want to show you is Cyberwise and we talked about Cyberwise in the beginning but this is another place that has um, resources for educators and lessons that you can incorporate into the classroom. I'm not sure if they're, I'm not entirely sure if they're free. I'm pretty sure they are, um, but we'll take a look at them in a minute as well. And then another organization that you should know about in terms of digital citizenship is I Keep Safe. And when I looked at their website, it looks like they've shifted a little bit. Um, they have education resources, which I have bookmarked in our Google Classroom but they seem to be really focused on privacy and making sure that companies are compliant with best practices related to student data and that sort of thing. So I think they've done a little bit of a shift with it, but their, their digital citizenship resources are still up on their website and we'll take a look at those when we do a tour. So I'm going to um, break out of here for a minute and see if you have any questions. Um, I think we only, I'm the only person here right now. Oh, nope, I've got one, we've got one other person here. Um, nope, it's just me. So, um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to show some of the resources from these websites and hopefully you'll find it helpful. So Common Sense Media, this is their website. And um, when you come to the website, you're going to see lots of different stuff. It's, it's overwhelming how much they have here. Uh, the first front page is, it goes right to for parents. And parents can personalize the website to the age group of their, of their child and find out what the recommendations are about things. And then there's a tab at the top for educators. And you can see digital citizenship materials and family engagement resources and classroom uh, posters. There are ed tech uh, reviews if you're looking for the right tool for a certain purpose in your classroom. There's professional development in the form of webinars, um, a video library and case studies. And they have some programs for teachers in schools that have participated in their programs. They also have a new privacy um, initiative where they're trying to educate parents, schools, and vendors on best practices and that. So um, if you scroll down, you'll see some featured resources. There's information on social emotional learning and media literacy, and there's a Facebook group that you can join to network with other people, which might be kind of a fun thing to do. I'm going to join their group right now, actually. I think that sounds like a good idea. Um, and I'm not going to answer the questions right now. I'll come back to this. But uh, know that you can um, network with others as well related to this. The most important stuff that you need to know are the digital citizenship curricular resources. And when you, um, you can go and look at the different grade levels and the lessons that are suggested here 
they've redone the lessons for grades three through five, and there's a, another full update coming this fall. So if you click on here, you'll see, you'll get an overview um, of those buckets I mentioned earlier. And these are some lessons that you can um, use as you're working with your students. So there's an overview, there's a lesson plan. You have to, you have to actually make an account to get to it. And it gives you some time resources and tells you what you need to do. It looks like there's family tips and activities that students can take home to do to reinforce the lesson uh, with their families. So it looks like there's lesson slides as well and all sorts of cool things that you can use um, with these resources. And they also provide training on these, on these different resources as well. So that is Common Sense Media. The next one is Be Internet Awesome. Let's take a look at that. This is Google's initiative uh, that came out last year. And there's a, um, there's, it looks like they, this is the second version of it. So they've added more stuff to it. Um, and they have a code of awesome, the internet code of awesome and different kinds of lessons that you can use and resources. So one of the resources is this game called Interland that you can do with your students. And I could, I'd say probably, I don't know, second, third grade and up maybe, maybe it might be a little bit older. There's a curriculum that you can download and look at. And they're looking to keep, and they did this in partnership with I Keep Safe, I see. Smart, alert, strong, kind, and brave. Those are the kind of guiding principles around the internet awesome. So I kind of like that positive spin on it. I think what's important to note, note is that a set of rules that tell students don't do this and don't do that, that's not going to um, produce positive behavior. It's going to, it has a little bit of a negative tone. So to me, this smart, alert, strong, kind, and brave philosophy um, puts a really nice spin on things. So here's their table of contents in this guide. Um, there's a letter for parents. There's an FAQ page. Um, they talk about sharing. They talk about fake news or, or fake stuff in general. Um, secu uh, password security. Um, being kind and polite and etiquette um, and how to get help if you have some sort of issue. So everything that you need um, to, to teach this curriculum is in um, is on the website and there's also a pledge that parents can um, can sign with their students with their children uh, to to do that. So lots and lots and lots of resources here. It looks like they uh, partnered with I Keep Safe and a couple other organizations that I'm not familiar with. One is Connect Safely and uh, the Family Online Safety Institute. So these might be two additional resources or organizations that you may want to consult as you think about how you're going to implement a digital citizenship program in your school. Uh, so that is Be Internet Awesome from Google. CyberWise is another one. Let's take a look at that. CyberWise.org. And there's a section for parents. There's a section for educators. You can follow them on social media. Um, they have um, learning hubs on different topics. So it looks like they recommend uh, specific apps. And they also give information about some apps that might be questionable here. So you might want to explore that and see what they say about these particular things. So those are some different topics on learning hubs. I'm going to pick the one on cyberbullying and take a look at it. So this explains what cyberbullying is. And there's a video that teaches how to be an upstander to cyberbullying. And then there's a guide that is free for parents. And they also suggest some additional resources um, 
that if you're looking to uh, find out more about this. So this is pretty comprehensive. This is really, really comprehensive. So make sure that you take a look at that. That's CyberWise, those are learning hubs. Um, they have newsletters, they have chats, um, they explain digital, citizen, digital citizenship. I wonder what digital citizenship outdoors is. So, um, wow. So I think it's talking about, um, using technology to enhance your nature experience, um, being present in natural surroundings, taking care of your woods. That's really interesting. I've not seen that uh, take on digital citizenship before. Um, and they also have games and resources as well. And then there's a cyber civics um, curriculum that looks like for schools. It's a middle school program. So, uh, and again, these lessons are free. That's great. And then what else do we have? There are online courses probably for, for teachers. There's presentations, they do parenting workshops, uh, and they have a blog. So that's CyberWise. I keep safe. I think there's an increasing uh, concern by parents about data and privacy and how their inf students information is secured and I and it looks like I keep safe is really kind of a, a watchdog around this so um, companies can certify their products to make sure that they're compliant with the best standards in um, privacy standards so they have um, three different categories for that before, actually, you can get Purpa certified, COPA certified, California student certified, and then Atlas certified, which is through for independent schools, I believe. So that's pretty interesting. Um, and if you go to resources and click on educator resources, you're going to see their, their digital citizenship con, um, content. So here's um, their Be Internet Awesome partnership with Google. Um, and these are these legacy resources, I believe, are from um, that they did a while ago. So they may not necessarily be updated. Um, that's my impression here. So, but they, I still think they're worth looking at um, if you're looking for creative ideas for teaching digital citizenship. So that's I Keep Safe. Um, what other ones have I talked about? I talked about Google, I talked about Common Sense Media, we talked about CyberWise, we talked about I Keep Safe. Have I gotten, have I gotten anyone? Let me go back to my slides and look. I wanted to make sure that we covered all of these. Common Sense, the Internet Awesome. Oh, Digital Citizenship Institute. Let's take a look at this. And there is one thing in here I really wanted to show everyone tonight. And that is, um, so this is the Digital Citizenship Institute. They are hosting a summit on September 22nd, 21st and 22nd, in conjunction with um, Missouri's ISTE chapter. And you can register for it there. And they have, um, it looks like they have some certifications here for schools as well. And, um, Let's see, I think it was under Dig Sick Kids. So the woman that started this, her son has also been an advocate uh, from students, for students about this. So you can, um, this is him, and you can follow them on Twitter and follow these hashtags and, um, you know, have them do workshops and that sort of thing. But they had, I think it's the bottom here, they have a, they're using a tool called Flipgrid, and let's see if this will go anywhere. Um, if I click on it, how do I how do I get to it? Add your voice to the DigSync Flipgrid. And uh, he's he's age nine, and the, the child that's involved with us, which is pretty cool, and he talks at different places. 
Um, so I'm going to Google this and see if I can find it um, because it's not working for me. Digit Flipgrid. Let's see if we can come up with anything. Digit Flipgrid. Come on. This might be it. Hmm. It's not coming up. Anyway, Flipgrid is a tool where you can um, record uh, videos um, related to, uh, you can record, and they had a topic where kids could respond to different prompts on digital citizenship. And I saw it last year, and I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, and I wanted to show it to you tonight, but I, apparently it's not there. So um, make sure that you take a look at these resources. I've put more into our Google Classroom for tonight. Uh, if there were more people here, I would take Q&A right now. But uh, we had one person tonight, and she had to go. Uh, so this is the end. This is the end of our series. And um, everything will continue to be in our Google Classroom. You go to classroom.google.com, and you enter the code that we showed at the beginning of webinar I can bring it up one more time if you would like this is the code and you will see everything that we've covered over the course of this webinar series and if you want to continue learning more um, you can email me for suggestions of different opportunities for for learning online and I'd be happy to make some recommendations. You also might want to go back and revisit our session on online professional development. There were lots of free informal learning experiences that I outlined during that webinar uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, the next thing that I'll be involved with is uh, my annual global education conference, which takes place online between November 12th and 15th. It's completely online. Um, completely virtual, completely free, and you can register at this at globaleducationconference.com if you're interested in presenting or attending. We'd love to have you. We gather educators from all over the world who talk about how they're developing global competence in students and teachers through project-based learning and other initiatives, and uh, it's really kind of an extraordinary event because it gives you an opportunity to meet other people from around the world and maybe potentially collaborate on projects and that sort of thing. So I would love to see you online for that, and that's coming up in November. Um, it will be online for 24 hours a day between November 12th and 15th to accommodate time zone differences, and uh, it's, it's really a great experience. This is the ninth year that we've been doing it. So without further ado, I'd like to um, uh, close off this webinar saying that I really appreciate all the time and energy that everybody has put into uh, coming to these events. It's been great working with people. I wish uh, I wish a few of you were here tonight to say goodbye to, but uh, you know, let's please keep in touch. You know where to find me on Twitter and through the Global Education Conference Network, and hopefully we can collaborate again one day. So thanks to Rio Salado for an amazing experience. I've really enjoyed doing this, and I hope that you find the archives helpful, um, whomever you are and wherever you are in the world. Have a great night, and uh, see you on the internet.